the Central African Republic. They're known as the Barka. In the Congo, the Mobuti. In Cameroon, Effie. The Pygmies ignore borders. Their country is the large equatorial forest, the land of myth and mystery. How many of them are there? No one knows. They live under the leaves, like elves or goblins. dismissed them as oddities for their small size and nudity. They don't produce anything. They hunt, gather, and sing. Their music is as old as the world. Some 4,500 years ago, Old Kingdom Egyptians discovered a strange people in the forests of the Upper Nile. Like us today, the Egyptians were amazed and charmed by the subtle beauty of the pygmy music and the sensuality of the dances. The pygmy hunters excelled at big game hunting. Elephants and gorillas were their favorite prey. They hunted them with spears, which is just about the same as hunting barehanded. My name is Louis Sarno. Motote? Leko? I was born in New Jersey, near New York City. After university, I left to live in Europe. One day, I heard a program about traditional African music on a Belgian radio station. I was amazed. I bought every recording I could find, but I could never get enough. I was obsessed by this music, so I decided to go there and record new songs. I landed in the Central African Republic in 1985, and I've been living with the Baka ever since. I got married here. I have children.
I need to go into the forest with Abaka. It's so reinvigorating. Here at the edge of the Bayanga National Park, a six-hour walk from the village, they set up a hunting camp where they will stay for several weeks. I am fascinated by the complexity of the Baka polyphony. In a single song, a multitude of voices weave an extremely dense musical texture. sometimes moves me to tears. The Baka songs are the quintessence of the human voice. I hear the forest in their music. The Baka music is a music of dreams. In his sleep, a person is visited by a mysterious presence that hums him a song. This visitor may be the spirit that every person receives from his father. When the sleeper awakes, he sings the song. If the others pick it up, it joins the repertory. The Barker love honey. They'll risk their lives for a honeycomb. For the pygmies, honey is far more than just food or a treat. It is an elixir of life, and they pursue it with determination. The best, the sweetest, is the honey gathered from the top of hollow trees some 30 to 50 meters high. To smoke out the bees, the Barka carry fire. According to legend, it comes from the first man. It has never gone out and is transmitted from generation to generation. The men have found a beehive, perched very high. They climb up, using a vine belt, the yenda. The Baka are the only people in the world to master these perilous and exhausting acrobatics.
They're sometimes so drained when they reach the hive that they get disoriented. With a misplaced chop of their hatchet, they can cut the vine and tumble down. The honey is not ready to be gathered. The climber risked his life for nothing. He probably didn't properly call the spirit that gives the honey. Ancestral spirits haunt the forest. They own it and control everything. Jengi is their chief. He is the spirit of the first man sent to earth by Komba, master of the spirits. The pygmies know it's better to appeal directly to God than to his saints and they call for Jengi in their songs. songs are beautiful, the dance is appealing, Jengi will be happy. He will send many animals into the hunting nets. The Barker will feast and they will sing and dance some more, thankful, their stomachs full. marshes are oases scattered among the trees. The large wild mammals come to lick the salt their bodies need. In the old days, the Barker hunted them with spears. Most of the species are now protected. For a long time, the pygmies rebelled against the ban on hunting. But with heavy hearts, they finally accepted it. Mikama tells his sons about the heroic hunts of the past. He teaches them that the great pachyderm must now be protected because it creates the wide paths under the trees where they like to walk.
Mundo, mula bota, akinde gindo jelo, abinelo, ki na tete, bate babusa gongo, batumba nandima, baba ola yuma, baba ola ngwangone, babekengone, badika mulango, baitu tuba lamba, tubu si jampie. The entire camp goes off to hunt. For the pygmies, the forest is life. In the forest, their beliefs, knowledge and culture are transmitted through communal experience. There is no master or student. The group builds its knowledge through exchange. Their life is an uninterrupted song. The hunting songs are called Bobe, the spirits of the hunt. The nets are woven from kosa fiber, a very strong vine. The nets come from the forest and belong to the forest. To coax the nets into doing a good job, the Barker talk to them, awaken them. The nets are attached in a line, one after another, forming a flexible and invisible wall several dozen meters long. <laughs> Everyone wants to attach his own net, as the owner of the section in which an animal is trapped receives a larger share of the meat than the others. The hunters shout to warn the nets that the animals are coming. Bafunga ma gila bilo, boyu so kanu no music ma bilo, so kan music ma baka, bon so gwa ma vila bilo se umba benda ngone, bo bilo ba ya ba tek se benda nesu, bu se umba na mina me suwa kunja se gwa na ndima se pura koko, se na mbwande, mokonga le ndo suna ya mbwande, se kana bwanga mio, au kae, mote na munda muke bu me ufem, mbu sa utambi, kana kana fa. A red diker has run straight into the nets. The boy kills it instantly. His movements are clean and sure. He's learnt them by imitating others and simply by always being involved. The meat is divided up according to a complex code. 
It's prepared fresh with mushrooms, walnuts and almonds, or it's smoked. No one goes hungry. Tabu is the last storyteller in the village of Bayanga. He alone still knows the Ganos. The Ganos are the fable songs that tell the story of a time when animals were human. Listen. A baby chimpanzee sees a leopard hiding in a hole at the base of a dead tree. The baby calls its father. Look in the hole. The father looks, and the leopard tries to catch it, but misses and slinks back to its lair. So the baby calls again. Look in the hole. And back goes the father. In the end, the leopard catches the father and kills him. Then Komba, god of the forest, sculpts the son so that he becomes a chimpanzee. And that's the story. When I arrived, there was no path, and you could only reach the Baka land via the river. Traditionally, the Sangha Sangha, a Bantu fishing tribe, were the masters of the Bakas. They were making the pygmies work an entire day for one glass of alcohol. I suggested moving the Baka village so that the Sangha would stop exploiting them, but the authorities were against it. Finally, the Sangha chief himself supported my idea. He said, the Baka are my children. It's not fair that they be treated this way. They moved to the other side of the river. Since then, their situation has improved a bit. In recent years, forestry has brought a lot of people to Bayanga. Today, 1,500 people live in the village. There are no sewers, the well water is bad, the river is polluted. People are ill, and they all need to be fed.
Here, people eat caterpillars. I think they're delicious. Lots of goods, which were unknown before the path, are now on sale in the village. These goods tempt the baka and stimulate their desire for money. Before, there was lots of game just 10 minutes away. Today, poaching has turned into slaughter. There's a lot of bushmeat on the market. Monkey, buffalo, antelope. The Central African forest is full of highly valuable wood. The public authorities don't have the financial or human resources to oversee the lumber industry. No one ensures that the lumber companies in certain remote regions obey the law. Sipo, Ayus, and Sapeli are the most highly prized trees. The loggers have to go farther and farther to find these rare trees and cut paths to transport the cut logs. These paths have opened the forest to poachers and settlers. When this sawmill closed, its workers from the Congo and from the north lost their jobs. They survive as best they can, often by poaching. The barkers' trips to the village are getting longer. Out of the forest, they forget their culture and become just uprooted people like all the others. In the dry season, the women fish by damming up the river. Fishing is a key activity in their imaginations and dreams. It is the theme of many traditional Barca tales. The women dam up the river's flow using branches they seal in place with mud. Then, they empty out the water. The pygmies have mastered the difficult technique of yodeling to perfection. This is the very basis of their polyphonic singing. The sleeping child has been lulled by yodeling since he was in his mother's womb. Naturally, one day he will yodel himself with great virtuosity. In the river, the women catch catfish.
and the small fish and shrimps that burrow into the silt. There's a hive at the top of this isolated tree. It's very high, very wide, and rotten inside. It would be too dangerous to climb it to steal the honey at the top. The baka decide it's best to cut it down. The woodcutters sing the bambadu, a song from the savanna they've appropriated. The melody and voices are simpler, yet the rhythms of the pygmy musical culture remain. Whether the fishing's good or bad, the women can't resist playing with the water as if they were beating drums. Some strike the water's surface with their palms, modulating strange watery sounds. Others just enjoy splashing around. The music of the pygmy women is different from any other type of music. They sing together in complex, syncopated rhythms that fascinate many contemporary musicians. <laughs> the hole containing the beehive has been opened. The barker were not mistaken. It's filled with stingless bee honey. The hives are fragile. They break easily and the barker gather the honey in the hole by hand. There are a dozen different types of honey. The sweat bee honey is produced by the trigona bee the barkers call a fly because it does not sting. This trigona honey is not in honeycombs, but is clustered in small pot-like forms. The sweat bee honey is very bitter and is a true delicacy for the baka.
The Barker rarely sing in the village. They need the setting of the forest and its amazing resonance to fully express their adventurous lives. They need the birds to answer back, the insects to accompany their songs. The spirits don't like the villages either. They come alive in the trees like every single pygmy born in these forests. The life of the pygmies is an uninterrupted song. Through songs they communicate, they speak to the forest, they appeal to the spirits of their ancestors. Spirits, come, give us food. Spirits, illness torments us, tell us what we must do. Spirits, thank you for the abundance. Unfortunately, my first recordings are now historical documents. Like everywhere else, the young pygmies don't want to become like their parents, who are illiterate and have always been exploited. They listen to modern music. Nobody dances the Alanda anymore, which is the traditional dance of seduction, a prelude to love. The evangelists imposed simpler Christian songs. In the forest, the leaves are the Barker's favorite material. They're used for every type of utensil. They're wrapped around food. They form the roofs and walls of the huts. When it rains, they become elegant umbrellas. The Barker are as light and flexible as these leaves that shelter and conceal them. <laughs> Karma is a famous lamba dancer. This dance is named for the bark and leaf skirt the dancer wears. The spirit asks, why do you call me? The woman answers, we're hungry, 
we call on you to give us meat. And then the spirit says, so then dance for me, and if it's good, I will send you meat. The women dance, and the spirit is charmed. Every year men die trying to gather honey. To steal this hive, Mongoji waited until midday when most of the worker bees have left to gather nectar. Mongoje tested the branch, hitting it with his hatchet handle. He can tell the shape of the nest from the sound. Now he's going to drill the honey hole, as the pygmies say. Sudden movement, a false step, and the climber crashes to the ground 50 meters below. Not all the bees are lethargic, far from it. Some sting the men who don't react. The gatherers are used to the venom, which is, it's true, less painful than that of European bees. Barker also love the wax of the honeycombs. They suck the honey directly from the cells. The men at the base of the tree have braided a small basket from bark and lined it with leaves from the nearby bushes. This basket carries the honeycombs down and is only used once. symbolizes the relationship between men and women. Eating honey, say the Baka, is as good as being with your wife. 
Offering honey to a woman is the first step to a more intimate relationship. The camping trip is over. The Baka will return to Bayanga. They've danced day and night. They've sated their hunger for the hunt and the forest. They've spoken with the spirit of their ancestors. They return to the village purified, reinvigorated. Pygmy's songs are far more than merely an astoundingly masterful art. They express an intense spirituality in constant communion with the forest. It's a miracle that this group has survived. If their music were to disappear, the worldwide community of man would be the poorer for it. We are like birds. They don't stay in the same place. They land a moment on a branch, then take off elsewhere. A branch is called Bakama in our language. We are Baka. We are the pygmies of the great forest. Mm -hmm.